Bueno, eh, muchas gracias. Good afternoon. Thanks very much for joining me this time of the day. Thanks very much to the Spanish Cybersecurity Institute for the invite. My name is Ana Rebollo. I work for ASTI, ASTI Technologies, a company from Burgos, a holding company, Holdco, that has under its umbrella a series of companies that sell products and provide services to other companies engaged in digital transformation. The most important of which is ST Mobile Robotics that does mobile mo robotics, as you can imagine. This is an engineering firm that designs, builds, implements, and provides maintenance for the mobile logistics of companies. This means that we automate the internal transportation within companies. Have you ever seen an Amazon video from the a warehouse of a Amazon? See, can you imagine these shells moving? Well, they move thanks to robotics, uh, ACV robotics, and that's the kind of robotics we do for the autom automotive uh, sector, the pharma sector, uh, food sector and airspace. So we move from cars to airplanes. We design the solution that the customers need. We're present across 16 countries and our main markets are the EU and the United States. In our company, I personally develop a program called uh, Talent 4.0. I'll talk to you about this program in further detail a bit later on. Robotics is one of the enabling technologies of Industry 4.0. Have you ever heard about this concept, Industry 4.0? Industry 4.0 is the term that was coined in order to refer to this technology explosion that we are witnessing and that will have a direct impact on uh, companies and business models. We've had previously three industrial revolutions that have had a huge impact on the economy. And the first industrial revolution uh, took place when the steamboat uh, joined the productive system. The second was the introduction of, the, of electricity and when the production uh, change were set. And the third industrial revolution took place when the electronics were introduced. And now we're witnessing the fourth uh, technological revolution. What is happening now? Well, basically that there's convergence. All the technologies, big data, connected reality, machine learning, robotics, cybersecurity, all of these uh, technologies are now being integrated and productive systems are rocking the foundations of the industry and have changed our business models. This has led to significant changes in everything in the industrial sector. For you to understand, I've brought a video I'd like to share with you so that you can understand the implications of this concept. The original Industrial Revolution was driven by the discovery that you could use steam engines to do all kinds of interesting things. That was followed by additional revolutions for electricity and computers and communications technology. We're now in the early stages of the fourth Industrial Revolution, which is bringing together digital, physical, and biological systems. One of the features of this fourth industrial revolution is that it doesn't change what we are doing, but it changes us. We need a different economic model that will allow us to meet the basic needs of every human on the planet and that will be focused not on growth per se, but on maximizing human well-being. We have energy technologies that can power our civilization, but how do we get it and implement it at the scale we need at a price that people around the world can afford? If we're able to do something to transform cities, to make them more efficient, then the impact can be huge. We can use asset tracking, we can use IT, we can use 3D printing to decouple growth from the resource constraints we have. The question of adding quality to quantity, it's really about a diverse, safe, healthy, and just world with clean air, clean water, clean energy. Together we are fighting to preserve our fragile climate from irreversible damage and devastation of unthinkable proportions. The prediction of 5 million jobs lost by 2020 to technology is serious, but the main question is how will we define work? How will we share the wealth? 
How can you have a doctor that really knows a lot about data? How can you have a biologist that knows about medicine? We have to create a space that enables people to think freely, to think divergent thoughts, to think creative thoughts. We really need a new education or new training. We're working with a world in motion in FIRST Robotics, trying to encourage students from third grade all the way up through the end of high school to pursue science, math, and different technologies. It's this ability of digital technology to change outcomes, to truly empower people that can create a more equitable growth. Fourth Industrial Revolution has the potential to make inequalities visible and to make them less acceptable in the future. I was the first person in the world to be able to voluntarily move my legs while stepping in a robot. The cure will be possible if enough of the right people have the will to make it happen. We're seeing this incredibly exciting convergence of genome editing, DNA sequencing. Governments have a very important role to play in enabling the safe and effective use of technologies. We need to take responsibility at every level of society to adapt to these technological challenges which are redefining what it means to be completely embedded in this world. Even though we have everyday problems, we have to solve, we have to find a way to lay the foundations for the innovations of tomorrow. Hola, hola, sí, me veis, vale. Um, como veis, as you've seen, technology is developed to the interest of people. We need to redesign a model that is more efficient. We need to make the most of these technologies to develop more sustainable and adapted models. Now, I'm going to try to explain to you uh, what this new reality is about and the applications of uh, technologies to specific situations. What differences can you identify between these two pictures? Mobile phones, right? And the picture on the top, uh, you see the situation in 2005 and 2013. When Pope Benedict was delivering his lecture, there was already a mobile phone, as you can see in the lower part of the screen. But in 2013, what we see is that technology has democratized and everybody now has a smartphone and is recording Pope Francis during his speech. What happens when we adapt technology? Well, we make it our own and we um, um, use it differently. So uh, this explains why we no longer take uh, pictures uh, necessarily to others, but take selfies. Technology um, by, is uh, used uh, differently with time, as you can see. Things we did in the past that we no longer do. Well, for example, and this also applies to you, I guess. You probably used a telephone booth sometime in the past, I guess so. Now we have WhatsApp. We're uh, connected um, on a real-time basis with our friends and relatives. So in the past, when we had to uh, take a flight or a train, we were giving a boarding uh, card, and now we use our mobile phones and our QR code to access. In the past, we went to airports, and we were waiting during a couple of hours reading a book, and now we're going crazy trying to get wired to the internet because we want to be connected around the clock. Another example, in the past, we went to visit sites, monuments, um, cultural events, and we took pictures. And now what we do is take a selfie and we'll take a look at those pictures later on. So. Technology has changed the way we do things. Other examples worth mentioning, technology helps us and shapes our behavior. Have you used Uber in big cities instead of the traditional cabs or taxis? Yes. And the other day, I was attending a conference and uh, I asked uh, how many people watch TV and nobody raised their hands because uh, 
young people are, are uh, no longer watching uh, TV or traditional TV. In the case of supermarkets, um, for example, Amazon, how many of you have purchased something in Amazon during the past month? Raise your hand. Wow. Now, lower your hand. How many of you have gone to the supermarket during the past month? Okay. A technological supermarket? No. And probably these youngsters don't go to do their sh grocery shopping every day. New generations probably have never even listened to music or using cassettes. Uh, and most of new generations will use Spotify or YouTube. And in the case of trips, well, the truth is we sometimes don't book a room in a hotel. We rather go for Airbnb. It's cheaper sometimes and more convenient, and we ha can read the opinions published by other guests. So everything is connected. We are digital beings. We're permanently providing data regarding what we like, when we consume specific services and products. We share this info with our friends. We're constantly sending pictures. We're even connected through our um, Fitbit, uh, bracelets, smart watches, even dogs are connected. There is a um, dog, a color that can be connected through an APP so that we know where the dog is, if any he's okay. And of course, the um, autonomous car. Or that will have an amazing number of um, sensors embedded. And as a result of this, when it's launched to the market, the uh, car factories are already considering how they change the inside of the car. Because when drivers no longer have to look to the road, well, the space for the driver can be changed as well. And many car factories or plants are already thinking about how they can distribute and redesign the inside of the car, of the autonomous cars, that is. Good. All this connectivity and this huge amount of data available and this is being to referred to these days with the term big data. And up until now, we didn't have to, uh, the means to measure and process all this information, but now we do. And the amount of data we have now is huge because people are constantly interacting. But when those that interact are not people but things, we will witness a huge explosion of data. And we're getting prepared for that explosion because everything's going to be connected. We're going to move from smart cities, connected cities, connected hospitals, connected roads, uh, connected factories. Everything is going to be connected and integrated so that processes are as efficient as possible and so that we have uh, customized, personalized uh, services. What happens with this huge amount of data? Well, that it can be used for good purposes or for um, ill um, purposes. And uh, that's why we need to talk about cybersecurity. The amount of information is so huge that we will need to uh, Mm, of course, hire cybersecurity experts, people like you, because we will have to protect ourselves from people that are willing to steal our personal or professional or corporate data. Companies are investing a huge amount of money because they're not only the employees are connected, in my company, robots are connected with everything that surrounds them. A robot in my company needs to be connected to its own software. And when implemented across other factories, it needs to be connected with the software in that other factory. Also with the doors, because when it moves from one place to another, it needs to be connected to the doors so that it can 
have access and all those are vulnerabilities that's why companies are investing a huge amount of money or at least some are investing a lot of money in cybersecurity to protect themselves from uh, attacks because when you work for other companies a uh, vulnerability of this kind can lead to downtimes in a factory and that translates into uh, huge economic losses. I'm going to give you the example of a company called PSA that has designed the factory of the future so that you can see how technologies are embedded in this factory. We currently live in an ultra-connected world. People want immediate B-scope solutions. And uh, it's very important that we identify these needs. We have prepared the factory of the future. In the steering center, we specify everything we need. The customer receives a message telling him when he's going to receive his new car. That order is sent to the provider. Everyone is connected. The uh, storage is automated, is flexible. And now let's discover the factory of the future together. The working stations, as you can see, are uh, wonderful. There's great quality assurance. Quality assurance is automatic and is done by computers. We control the geometry of our parts using laser technology. The different parts are connected. The factory of the future doesn't resort to paper. Everything is done virtually. Whenever defaults are detected, what we see is that those parts are rejected. We have uh, also a customization of all the products. We have robots that are assembling the different parts. Depending on the requirements of the customers, uh, some or other products are manufactured. What we see is that the cars uh, are then uh, assembled and there you can see how the quality assurance is done. Everything is done in a highly effective and efficient manner. Augmented reality allows our um, operators to work even more efficiently. We've implemented a new business model based on real-time exchanges between the factory and the customers. We see that everything is done by machines. We see also how the movement between the elements is unrestricted. The factory of the future is the interaction or coming together of the human dimension and robots. And when everything is done, a message is sent to the customer to inform him or her that his car is ready to be delivered. The factor of the future starts today. As you can see in this example, technology puts to the very center of the customer. The customer from his own smartphone can order his car, a customized car, and once that order is received, the whole process is, uh, kicks off and the car is manufactured in an automated uh, way. In the future, my daughters uh, will not have to go to a car dealer to purchase a car. They probably will be able to purchase a car through the internet. In that video, you've seen many technologies coming into play, big data, robotics. Have you realized the number of robots that uh, were manufacturing the cars? We've seen that interaction between human and robots. Those robots are AGVs. Those robots 
have the ST logo. This factory exists. It's located in France. It belongs to one of our customers called PSA. It already exists. It's a pilot factory that is being tested. It's in the beta phase and it will be deployed. That same model will be deployed across all production centers. So these technologies of the future are already uh, here and they're here to stay. These technologies are being tested in many different factories and plants from different sectors. I come from Burgos and in Burgos there's a group of companies that have joined forces in order to co-create different innovation systems in order to apply technology to productive systems. For you to understand that these technologies are uh, already being used out on the field. As I was saying earlier, everything is interconnected. We're talking about global data. We want to be faster, swifter, more flexible, and we want to ensure customized products and services. And we want to uh, cater for the needs and the requirements of the customers. Let me give you some uh, real examples of how technologies are being applied. For example, I can't mention the names of the museums here. You have the picture of the Botin Center here in Santander. But big data is a technology that is being used to collect data from the visitors uh, that uh, go to different museums. And based on that uh, info or data, museums can adapt their communications and their uh, future uh, agendas and exhibits. Thanks to big data, we're able to obtain real-time analysis of, uh, for example, humanitarian crisis. There's a company that does big data. And what they did was to monitor during uh, Mexico's earthquake all the data obtained during the minutes before the earthquake and right after the earthquake. I haven't uploaded the full video, but in the video you can see the number of uh, connections and communications before and after the earthquake. So thanks to big data, we can know that something has happened in a place uh, with a greater advance. For example, L'Oreal, another company, how do they think they're applying technology? manufacturing connected shampoo. No, not at all. In the case of L'Oreal, we're not talking about connected shampoo. But what they've done is to create an intelligent or smart um, brush that has some sensors embedded. So when you brush your hair, it gives you info on the state of your hair. You have a problem with your hair, and if so, Basically, they tell you where you can buy uh, L'Oreal products to, to look after your hair. There's this other company, a Spanish company, that has designed a technology to control the state of uh, crops and um, depressed areas through drones. So this is another example. This technology is being used, and what they do is uh, try to uh, identify in an early fashion well plagues, for example, to ensure good uh, harvesting seasons. Another example of how we can use um, these um, state-of-the-art technologies. I don't know if you like running or if you practice running, but Nike has begun selling some sport uh, wear that has a specific device and the sole and since they began selling these um, sneakers they have collected a great amount of data from their target audience and with that info Nike is not considering to sell sneakers directly they're going to sell experiences they're going to um, offer for example the experience of the New York Marathon since I have all the data that I've collected uh, from you for a number of years, I know that now you're able to run a marathon, so I sell you that experience, the New York Marathon, and I 
um, give you advice and tips regarding eating habits, training. I know when your sneakers uh, soles are worn off and when you need to purchase a new pair. <coughs> so they're going for a more experience oriented approach. This example I like from a company, the name is Geo Cosmo, Geo Cosmo is design a PP that if you download it in your cell phone, it has a geodesic um, application that makes your phone a device able to predict earthquakes four months before due to the magnetic um, currents in the environment. So if we all had this downloaded in our cell phone, we might have data about all our sensors and we could anticipate um, a natural disaster such as an earthquake. We see interesting things in uh, the fields of sports, aesthetics, geology, farming, medicine. We have factories of the future. Would you like to work in this field when you become older? I thought uh, I was going to have more students in this session. And um, this is a presentation to give you information about what's going on and to show that there is a whole room for opportunities. Those are just a few examples. The future will be larger. There will be new interaction, new data, and uh, new technologies. Technologies I've just mentioned are the ones that will give rise to new technologies, new products and services, new behaviors. New technologies will change the way we behave. This will also generate new business models that's of interest to companies. Everything is changing and what is happening today will have an impact in the future. In, they say that in 20 years time, 60% of all current jobs will disappear thanks to robotics and artificial intelligence. So the younger audience here, when you end up your school days, you will work in uh, positions that uh, do not exist yet. So we should keep an open mind and be aware of all innovations. You should attend this type of fora to get to know the new technologies and keeping in touch to those that are developing them. At the end of the day, what is important of this industrial revolution, what is strategic about this technology is not technology itself, but people, no matter how good our technology is, if we don't have people that can develop it, there's not much we can do. What is important about the Industry 4.0 is the talent needed. And what happens that there isn't uh, this uh, talent yet. Why this room is not full, in addition to being siesta time, is because there is a lack of digital profiles right now. In 2020, eight out of 10 youngsters will find a job in the digital environment, and we are already at the end of 2017. What happens that now, today, there will be one million jobs uh, without uh, the necessary digital skills. There is still a lack, a gap in digital profiles. So not to think about 2020. We need the people with digital profiles, people that are trained in the STEM domain, which are the acronyms of science, technology, technology and mathematics. And Everything is going to be related to technology, all professions. Obviously, since careers devoted to programming, but also a lawyer will have to handle technology, will have to learn uh, about um, data protection laws, oh, 
marketing specialists will also work in digital companies. Designers will have to be empowered in the digital world to show what they do. Physicians are now implementing technology to design predictive systems for cancer treatments and therefore technology will permeate all industrial sectors. And how are we doing in this uh, regard? Only 26% of uh, university students go to STEM with uh, this revolution in hand, only 26% will go to those uh, university studies. This will be a challenge. Since 2013 to 2014, those scientific studies in Europe were 8%. In China, 40%. That means that Chinese are already in this area. And uh, if we don't pay attention to this, they will bite the market. There is a great deal of opportunities in this domain. And if you like it, you should go to those studies. In 2025, 7 million jobs will be in those areas. What happens about female STEM profiles? Only 20% of um, those enlisted in STEM uh, studies are women. If we were 100 people in this room, which is not the case, but only 25 will be choosing STEM studies. And of women, just you and two more. That is to say, three women. We have to change this situation with this future ahead that is already here. We should urge this type of uh, university studies to have more digital profile and to fill the gender gap. It's not that women are not capable. Maybe they haven't been communicated this need in the right manner. That is, therefore, another challenge we have to meet. When students are choosing vocational training or in university, in technical careers, they will be very much in touch uh, with uh, business world in order to have a dual education system. Education system is not coping with the current uh, market pace and, uh, and therefore the education system is lagging behind. The only way for companies to have the talent they need is to develop joint uh, projects, collaborative projects. So you will um, live in this environment that is needed for companies to innovate. They need you. You are a generation of digital natives. So technologies um, are more suited to you. All of these favors entrepreneurship and innovation. This does not mean that you should all have your own company or your own startup. It uh, means that you need an entrepreneurship uh, spirit. My company is a robotics company. It just builds robots. And I'm implementing a project based on talent and STEM studies. It does not really have much to do with robots, maybe on a long run, but not now. So we have a small and internal startup. I work in this company, but I work for my project. And these type of actions will be more and more present. So you should have this uh, sort of mentality. You should all become entrepreneurs. At the end, the talent needed to face this revolution requires a digital attitude, requires creativity. You are very creative. You are yourself, taught yourselves. Nobody has really taught you to use WhatsApp, Instagram, or any other application. You yourselves learn on the go. 
this capacity is highly valued now, also innovation and, of course, STEM competences, technical and sound uh, training based on uh, technologies. But we need a good um, basic uh, knowledge. You will create your own opportunities. You will have to decide on the topics and uh, go for them. You can do, you can make your dreams come true. You should become responsible and fight for your goals. It will no longer depend on your parents to help you or your friends or your peers or your teachers. You should have, hold this responsibility in your hands and you should attend this type of fora. As I said before, you are probably studying for careers that will disappear or for jobs that will no longer be there. So you need a parallel training. You should um, study what you really like, what you feel passionate for, and you should go on researching and um, training yourselves. Nobody will do it in your place. This type of um, initiatives to promote um, STEM talent among the youngsters is present in many different companies. Therefore, it's a great time to participate. Technology companies, we are desperate to capture new talent because there is a gap. We need to grow as companies. We have very ambitious strategic plans and we need talent to realize them. And there is a serious uh, talent crisis now. Uh, but if you go to these type of studies, you will not have employment problems. And the INCIBE organizes these sort of initiatives so that you're interested in cybersecurity and you can start uh, in this uh, subject. Go to all workshops, seminars, etc. If you enjoy robotics after the talk, you can contact me. There are programs to develop 4.0, talent 4.0, and I will speak uh, of my company. We have developed uh, a brand, the name is Programa Talento 4.0, with six different initiatives to promote STEM studies and to attract and retain talent in our company. The first uh, program There is a warning here in the screen that the screen will switch off. But one of the programs that we implemented is called STEM Talenger. It's a program to promote STEM studies for women from uh, 6 to 17 years old in order to fill this gap. So girls are introduced to women that have been successful in the field of technology. There are different master classes held once a month from November to June on Saturdays. And in Santander, we have a venue for those sessions that has just been opened a week ago. So in your city, you will have eight speakers of the highest level in the field of science and technology. It's an open program. You can all attend with your friends. It's classes are free. The next uh, session will be on the 16th of December at the exhibition hall in La Magdalena. So the first thing we do is put the girls in um, contact to state-of-the-art um, specialists so they discuss about technology. The objective is to create or to have reference models. The percentage of girls that go towards science and technology is low, but in general, is not very high. And those percentages are falling. There is a lack of interest towards these fields. And we should go on doing uh, things to promote the interest so that people 
really know what's happening. I will show you a video later. Then on 80 Challenge is another program to promote STEM vocations in the area of mobile robotics. There is an annual challenge, usually in May, in the city of Burgos on the 12th of May, 2018. And um, different teams are met, uh, and they have to design, make the prototype, and build a robot that if it's um, overcoming the steps, there will be a final tournament in Burgos. There are different uh, tests, speed, uh, obstacles, the maze, different uh, sort of races that uh, the best ones will have to overcome at the best uh, time. This year we've incorporated a second uh, category of a uh, higher difficulty where students have to add different programming techniques as ROS that is a little bit more complex is the one used by non-drivers uh, vehicles and this tournament will become a reference at a national level in the area of robotics and it's also a great place for students to know what's going on in relation to the state of the art technology and you can learn and implement those ideas. So the first two are programs to promote the STEM studies. The next two programs are devoted to attract and capture talent for my group. ASTI, the first is called ASTI Academy for Vocational Training Studies with a dual system. Part of the training is not carried out in the classroom, but in our company with our colleagues working on real robotic uh, projects so that uh, when you come or finish your studies, you're better prepared for what you will find in the business world. ASTI College is a similar project, but in university, university students come to our company so that part of their education is evaluated by the company. With this program, we had from us the students from the Massachusetts Technology Institute. Also, a business school in SET is a very important European business school, and we have captured 27 engineers this year. So I think it's quite good. As the Open Future is another initiative in our company where we want to have a startup promoting co-creation so that startups might work jointly with our I research and development uh, departments. And the last program is ASTI Skills. After uh, promoting and attracting STEM studies and STEM specialization, we retain those uh, students. We develop the different skills so that they deepen in their profile and they feel at ease in our company and they might stay with us. And now I will show you a small presentation of the first and last of the five programs I've introduced. This is STEM Talent Girl, a project to inspire, educate, and empower the next generation of leader women in science and technology. We will all be equal in opportunities and talent. I will say this is very interesting. They fought for what they wanted to do, and I want to be like them. You can listen to advice, but you should do what you like. I pretty much knew what I wanted to study, but now I've changed my mind. I want to study archaeology. You know, it's not a matter of being right or wrong. What you think is a mistake may not be the case. It's been an unforgettable experience that helped me start building my journey very inspiring the way in which those women had an impact on us may sound rather utopic but it's true and 
the talks were incredible. People that really convey their passion. They communicated their passion for the work, that they love their work. The only thing I want to say is that the world is waiting for you, so let's lead it. We are very lucky to be here. We wish to attract the younger ones, give them information so that they can make the best decisions based on information. This uh, program started, as I said, with um, girls from uh, secondary education at the year where they have to make the decision of going to scientific studies or humanities. We put them in contact with uh, mentors and we accompany those girls in the latest years of um, high school and the first years of university so that this talent is not lost. The pilot program was uh, in Burgos last year. We had 350 requests to the program. We selected 30 girls. We had eight speakers of the highest level. We created a mentors community with 60 women that this year we are around 100 at a national and international level that will be coaching or mentoring our students. And uh, after this pilot project in 2017, this year and next year we'll be in Burgos, Valladolid, Cantabria, and probably Madrid. For next year we have proposals to scale up to Leon, Rioja, Asturias, and some other Spanish cities. The impact of the program is that 100% of the girls that are part of the program have very clear that they will pursue technological studies or use technology in their profession. So, And this was our objective, to take them towards the digital empowerment we're talking about. The other program is the challenge ASTI Robotics. It's a very specific challenge to detect the STEM vocations in the area of mobile robotics. You have to design, build, and compete with a robot. In the first uh, edition, we've been uh, the most... Uh, we had 35 teams from Spain. Finally, they were 25 teams. They were 150 direct participants with the highest participation in Spain. We had participants from the Canary Islands, Galice, Valence, Madrid, and it was a great level. And I urge you to go to the website, and if you feel like um, participating and designing a robot, you're very welcome. I'm just gonna show you a video, so you see how things went. Today, here we are in this tournament, 24 teams, 150 participants, and 50 volunteers in ASTI Technology Room. Thank you very much for being here. ASTI Robotics was born to develop 4.0 talent. The talent, when we speak about STEM talent, we speak about the importance of scientific uh, fields as science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Those are the acronyms for STEM. The idea is to promote vocations in these areas. It's a public and private collaboration. ASTI, the leader, the project leader, but we would like to have uh, more companies with us. Thank you for this first challenge by ASTI Robotics with the highest participation in ever in Spain in its category. So if you feel like um, participating next year, the call ends on the 12th of January 2018. And uh, this is the end of my presentation. The idea was to speak about our technology, technological revolution. The real problem we have uh, 
in relation to the lack of talent. And if you like it, you yourselves have the opportunity to design your future. Is if opportunity doesn't knock, uh, build the door. So you are at a very important time where you should be focused and learn about all those initiatives implemented by INCIBE or companies as ASTI so that you get to know new professions or new professional careers. What I said, there's a whole world of opportunities without boundaries. Technology examples can be many more. Technology in our hands, it depends on us and without labels. One of the reasons why there aren't so many STEM students is due to stereotypes that say that the computer experts are freakies, that there are no women in those uh, careers, and this is just nonsense. You just have to see what's going on, what we can do, what we want. And uh, leading the change, we should really look for what we like, we should feel passionate about it, we should be able to know what we really like and focus on our strengths, our abilities and talents, always with passion, with passion and willingness. Luck is always there, generating value and looking for a common good. So with this small recipe, I'm sure that you will be successful. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, Thank you so much for your attention. The question is about the STEM robotics challenge, how the scoring system works. All the tests, the, there are different attempts or steps, and therefore the score depends on whether you have finished all the tests and as fast as possible. So depending on the score you have uh, obtaining, everything adds up. And at the end, those that have been successful in most of the tests and as fast as possible, they will be the winners. The in Registration will be open until January the 12th. You can register at the website as a team and present an idea. From then on, and you should do a presentation video. With this video, we give you a Raspberry Pi so that uh, you design the robot. You have to present a prototype, and with this prototype, we do a first threshold, and depending on all designs, we see those that are better equipped, they can go to the next step, the second. And the third is the prototype. So when presenting the prototype, you should also produce a video. You have to send the video, and we will see the real progress of your design. Once you have concluded this part, we decided 25 teams that will go to the finals and then they compete in what we call the final challenge. Any other question? No. Can you hear me? Yes. Just to congratulate you for all the initiatives, but I have a question. We discussed it at lunchtime. You say that your company promotes uh, entrepreneur spirit. Do you devote full time to those initiatives or part time? When I started in ASTI, uh, the marketing and communication department, to carry out digital marketing, but quite soon I became involved in, in talent projects and 
once all pilot projects were tested, we had to launch them and I took them to other cities. This is a full-time job that requires many hours and the company could not uh, face this. This came outside the company's business as a parallel project and Roberto and myself, we are the talent team and we implemented as if it was our own company. We control everything. And something else, the video, the PSA factory, is it a public video? Is it in YouTube? I think so, yes. I think it's in YouTube. You know that I come from Vigo. My family works at a PCA factory in Vigo, one of the largest in the world, and uh, is not very similar. This one is in France. 8,000 people are working in Vigo, so we won't have time now for the discussion, automatization versus manual work. Automatized processes are those in which a person would not add, add value. They are internal logistics processes. A person does not add value just taking a box and moving it somewhere else. If you speak about a case, a box, a house, um, a plane, so we make automatic those logistic processes that uh, do not add value to the final product and consumers do not pay more for them. So our customers will have less cost. We design efficient flows so that they can save money at a stage of the productive uh, process that uh, does not add value. This becomes automatic and then this requires other qualified jobs that have to be supervised by humans so we generate some other jobs where we can as humans provide more value any further questions if it's not the case you're free to go go enjoy the cyber camp show and thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found my presentation.